Hello, my name is Adam Gordon, an entertainer with IT Pro TV, and I'm your host for our How to Use Zoom series on YouTube. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the audio and video settings associated with Zoom and Zoom meetings. Join me here, if you will. I'm going to show you. We're going to begin by already being logged in to our Zoom desktop app. I'm logged on in this episode as a paid Zoom user using one of my paid plans. This group of settings and the settings we're gonna see in the portal are going to uh, be approximately the same for both users. All the settings in the app are gonna be identical whether you are logged on as a paid and or a normal free user. Uh, whether you choose to add a piece of hardware to have an existing and perhaps an external camera. I've added a external webcam for this episode just so we could see that we can toggle between webcams. So you may not see that when you go to log in, but other than that, you're gonna have the same experience as we get going. Doesn't matter what kind of webcam you plug in, as long as it's a USB one that will be supported and found through plug and play. So just pointing that out as we get going. All right, so I'm gonna start by coming over here I'm gonna show you that we're about to go and access our settings. This is the gear icon right below my profile picture right there, upper right-hand corner, as we log in from the home page of the app. I'm gonna take us back to full screen just so you can see this as we load this. Uh, the settings page will come up. It will take the better part of the page and it will be separate. And since we wanna take a look at video and audio settings, I'm just gonna start by pointing out where they are right under general. We'll start with video because it's the first one up as we take a look. Our background picture or video, if we have changed a virtual background and modified it, will be displayed at the top and we'll see it animate if it's a video in play. If it's a picture, you'll just see it normally. Uh, if you haven't seen the episode, by the way, in our series on how to modify and use virtual backgrounds, that's setting right there, definitely go take a look. Uh, we show you how to set them up, how to use them with both a static image like this and a video and how to then go in and use that in a meeting to show that it's working the right way. All right, so we see that representation here, but what we wanna take a look at right down here as I scroll up and down are the settings that we can modify. Let's zoom in and take a look here for our video settings. Now, I talked to you about the fact that I have added an external webcam for this episode. You'll see under camera, the integrated webcam or something to that effect in your machine as you look, is gonna be your built-in camera that is for instance, up on your monitor or up on your screen. I'm just opening mine right now. You can kind of see me pop it in there up at the top. There I am. You can see it's live and I'm actually looking at it right now, right? And you can see me over the logo. I'm just gonna close it again so I don't get in the way and distract you while we're talking. So that's our integrated webcam built into the machine. Now, when I pull down, I see that I do have another webcam that's there. That's my external webcam that I'm holding in my hand right here that I've loaded up. And if I choose that one, let's just do that. Let's scroll up here and you can see that right now, right? It's kind of showing me, there I am right there, right? See, look, I'm waving and you can see the webcam right there. And you know, if I kind of scroll around, it's not really gonna pick up much in the studio because it's just seeing glimmers and flashes of things against the white background, but you can see it does work well for me, and you could see me right there, right? So that's how we can add that camera. I'm showing you the base of our microphone on the desk right now. Let me just uh, change back, right? So you can see it's easy to flip between the two with no trouble at all. So one of the things you wanna be aware of is that we can change the camera. And a lot of you may just work with the built-in camera like I typically do on my laptop, but a lot of you may have an external camera. And if you wanna use it or flip between it because maybe one is HD, gonna give you better quality for meetings, definitely have that capability. Really simple and easy to do. And you'll also notice we could set the widescreen versus original ratio aspect for that. The default is widescreen, but you can modify that just by selecting here. Notice that we enable HD video by default. Again, you can check on and off to select. Mirror my video is going to be selected. Touch up my appearance enables the system to do a little smoothing around the rough edges, kind of like those filters you may use in some of those social media apps uh, that, you know, uh, just uh, do touch ups, let's say, make you uh, look a little bit brighter, cheerier, or nicer, if you will. We can do that. It'll smooth away some of the uh, rougher elements on tracking as you move around, things like that. You'll see also for meeting, that's just really around the video. As we scroll down, we see meetings. You'll see always display participant names on their video. This is one of the things people ask about a lot. Turn off my video when joining a meeting. I mentioned in 
one or two of the earlier episodes in our series that when I join a meeting, I have video turned off by default. Actually, when we did our virtual backgrounds episode, I showed you that when I onboarded to a meeting to demonstrate the virtual background that I had to enable video. And I said, I have it turned off by default. Well, the way you do that is by coming in here and modifying these settings. I prefer to join a meeting without video on because number one, uh, we may be in a limited bandwidth situation. So as a result, you may not wanna immediately start with video because it may prove to be a problem for the connection. Number two, other people may not be using video. It just may not be appropriate for the meeting. And number three, as, as hard as this may be for some of you to hear, not everybody wants to see what's going on around you in a meeting, and there may be people, especially if you're working remotely, working from home, as many of us may be now, or attending classes if you're in school from home and using Zoom, you're probably home with other people. They may be walking around doing things, uh, and they may not be aware of the fact that you're on and broadcasting video, and let's be honest, nobody wants to see your partner, your colleague, your peers, your brothers, your sisters walking around the house, right, while they're in a meeting. So just be aware of that. Keep that in mind. All right, so always show video preview dialogue when joining a video meeting. You can do that if you want to. And you'll see we can do a variety of other things. Spotlight your video when you speak so it really draws attention to you in the meeting. You can do that. You could display up to a certain number of participants per screen in the gallery view. Gallery view is that pop-out view that shows you a little video tile or a little tile with potentially the video and the name of the person that's attending. So you can decide to do that. Now, if you don't see any video, there is a troubleshooting link here. You can get some help uh, online to do some things, run some diagnostics. And then there is an advanced button at the bottom. Now advanced, it's going to take you to another set of settings in this settings area, not to the portal. We're going to take a look at the web portal for some additional settings in just a couple of minutes, but advanced will keep you in the settings area here. It's just gonna show you some advanced settings for video. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna click here. It's gonna change the settings underneath this area here. And it's gonna show us, we have a back button, by the way, to navigate back, that things like enabling denoise to do some noise cancellation in the background, uh, hardware acceleration for video processing, things like that. These are all enabled by default and typically, probably don't have a need to be able to go ahead and to manipulate these settings unless you're troubleshooting and trying to figure out if something is wrong. They're turned on. They're usually turned on because of performance issues and reasons, and they help your system to be able to provide better video and consistently keep up with the meeting as it flows video. So you probably want to leave them intact, but at least be aware of the fact they're here. And then there are categorical areas for video rendering, video rendering both during the method as well as post after you actually grab the video and the capture. And these are all set to auto. And again, probably the best thing to do would be to leave them set to audio, auto for most of us, especially if you're just a casual user in Zoom, you know, attending meetings as you work remotely, a student attending a class, that kind of thing. You really don't have a reason to mess around with these. They're not really going to benefit you. But if you're using Zoom, uh, to be able to record meetings because you're perhaps broadcasting those meetings out as you're working remotely for other members of your team. You want to play around a little bit with the quality and make sure some things are done specifically a certain way. There definitely are options here that you can investigate and you could pull down any of these and either enable or disable depending on what they are. Perhaps choose to change to one of the uh, other rendering methods that may be hard coded as opposed to letting the system decide which one of these would be the best one given the nature of the technology and the connection. Uh, and also for capture method, same idea, right? Which method will be best? And again, letting the system have this set to auto lets it kind of decide based on the conditions, the technology, the capability, what the best solution is instead of you making a hard-coded choice that only allows the system to operate a certain way. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna come up here, go to back, back to where we were. We're gonna come over here and do the same thing by looking at audio settings. Let me just come over here. We'll see as we look at audio settings that we have both a speaker and a microphone area. You'll notice I'm speaking and there's an input level that's moving showing that I am indeed broadcasting out audio, which is good, my microphone is working. Uh, but if I needed to check it, I could run a test here really quickly. I could do the same thing with speakers and I have different options depending again on the hardware in your system. I have options and I can make a choice. I can move the slider here to make the output louder or lower. Left would be lower, right would be louder, right? And you could see the same thing for the microphone and automatically adjust volume is selected by default, meaning the system will automatically adjust the microphone level as I speak louder and may go down or up accordingly, up to you 
to decide to leave that alone. You'll also see I have separate audio device to play ringtones simultaneously. If for some reason you want that maybe in an onboarding scenario for meetings, you can do that. Automatically join uh, using the computer uh, audio when you're joining a meeting. You can check that off so that automatically does it instead of you being prompted at the log on screen as you might have seen in some of the earlier episodes. Mute your microphone when joining, just like I can turn off and on my video. I can mute the mic automatically when joining. Again, up to you to decide. You'll see we can unmute yourself by using the space key as a shortcut. We can hard code that. It's turned on by default. Sync buttons on, he on headset if there is going to be some capabilities there where buttons do enable functionality. Uh, they will be synced and you'll have that functionality as a pass through into Zoom. So that's kind of nice. On by default, by the way. And we do have advanced settings, as you could see, just like we did with video. When we click on those, we'll come up and we see several settings here. Show in-meeting option to enable original sound if you need that for some reason. And again, audio processing settings, three of them, three categories, again, all set to auto and always have the option to modify them. But same kind of warning and caveat here, probably best, especially for most of us that are really primarily using Zoom to collaborate, to attend classes, to essentially do what I call casual use. I understand work in school is not casual. What I mean is you're not using it to professionally record presentations and broadcast them out is what I would say is non-casual use in this case. If you're not doing that, then you really don't have a need to mess around with these settings. Auto will probably work best for all of you, but you can make choices here around echo cancellation and suppressing background or intermittent uh, persistent noises as needed. And you can leave that to auto and or you can be moderate aggressive and or turn that off depending on what you choose to do. Auto means it will try to adjust given the level of noise that's going on in the background. All right, now we can restore defaults by the way, if for some reason our settings seem to be out of sync and we're not happy with them. All right, so we've seen the audio and the video settings in the app. But remember, I said there were a couple of settings I want to take a look at on the portal. I'm going back to the general tab for settings. And I'm going to come down here to remind you that view more settings on the general tab will link us directly to the portal. So you can open the portal just by doing that. Now, I've already got the portal open, but I'm going to use this link just to show you what's going on. So I'm going to just go back so we can see this. Click view more settings. Give that a second. You'll see it's flashing down here. So it's telling me that my browser is opening up. So let's just do that. Let's minimize this. And sure enough, you could see I've been taken to the Zoom portal and I am logged in as, as you can see, the Adam at IT Pro TV user based on my picture right there. Now I'm coming over here, coming down, and I'm up under personal. And the nice thing about using that link takes me in, and because I'm in settings, it takes me directly to the settings area. If I had clicked on the profile element in my menu, it would have taken me to profile. It's just a matter of clicking to be where I want to go. So I'm in settings. Now I'm going to go back out so you can see this. I'm going to navigate down. We're on the meeting tab, by the way, right here, right? And I'm going to scroll down using my scroll bar on the right-hand side, about three quarters, half to three quarters of the way down. So there's a couple of settings in here that I do want to show you that will be helpful. And these are up under in meeting advanced, by the way, just so you could see the category as we break down settings, basic, and then advanced. So in meeting advanced is where we are, about halfway, just over halfway down. And I'm going to come to these two settings right here, and I'll add this third one in just for good measure because we're here. Let's take a look at far end camera control. This is one we get asked about a lot. You'll notice it's turned off by default. Off is that this is to the left and it is gray. This is on, it's to the right and blue, and it's a slider. And you can see I'm easily just toggling these on and off as we go. And it tells me I've updated my settings in real time. Far end camera control. Allow another user, somebody else in the meeting, to take control of your camera during a meeting. Now, that may or may not be a good idea for you, but if you want someone to, and this is really more not so much around your camera, like my individual camera, like I'm just activating right now, probably more around being in a meeting room and having one of those cameras that may be mounted on the desk that may do the camera in the round, right? Like an owl device or one of those devices that lets you see everybody in the room and the camera in theory tracks while people are talking. You may want somebody to be able to take control of that to be able to zoom or swivel it around so they can focus on something. Um, you could obviously let them take control of your own camera as well, but there's limited value in that per se. But 
If you want to enable that, because it is turned off by default, you must come into settings here under advanced settings for meeting and turn that on. Group HD video is in high def video. Activate higher quality video for host and participants. Does, and please pay attention, uses more bandwidth, a lot more bandwidth, by the way. So that is turned off as well. Again, we can enable that. Not a big deal, but you must opt in. Those of you that are at home working on your home internet connections, probably not a big deal. But those of you that are on a mobile device and are using data as opposed to being connected wirelessly to the internet, that could be a big gotcha because you may chew up your data plan really quickly and incur a lot of additional costs. So just keep that in mind. Third one I said I'd throw in just because we're here. I often get asked this as well, virtual backgrounds. Well, we, again, we did a whole episode on that in our series. So definitely check that out. But you can actually turn off the use of virtual backgrounds. Sometimes people do or they're not aware of the fact that it's been turned off and doesn't work for them. They want to know why. All you have to do is come in here. You can see by default it is turned on for meetings. But again, you may have a corporate um, Zoom system where everybody in the business is using it and the corporate IT administrator may have set up a policy that says, hey, no virtual backgrounds are too distracting. Or your teacher, if you're in a class, may have gone and said, hey, you know, if the school is providing the platform, no virtual backgrounds too distracting, it's turned off. So if you want to try to turn it back on, you can go in and see if it is off here and you'll see that you can do that. All right, so as you see, we're able to take a look at these settings in the portal. And I'm going to scroll back up here just as we get ready to wrap up. That's under meeting on the meeting tab. There are other areas here for recording and for telephone. We'll be looking at these in upcoming episodes, seeing how we do recording, how we manipulate settings, variety of things that will be important. But that's going to be somewhere down the road as we continue our series. But until I come back with more episodes, happy Zooming. Check out the playlist for more videos on how to use Zoom and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Adam Gordon, and thanks for watching.